it's a funny thing, but I, I have a sports doctor <clears throat> that's, uh, that I got assigned uh, to me by my family doctor. And then from there, I got my sports doctor to hop on board with my project. So, you know, I told her, listen, this is the plan. Five years, I want to be a world champion in my division. I got to keep yeah. the body intact. And she told me, well, listen, if you want to do that, you're going to need a bubble. You're going to need a bubble that you could trust. So a bubble meaning a group of people who, will, who, who are there for you, to take care of you and to, to guide you through the whole uh, process. So you're going to need a judo coach, which I have already. You're going to need a sports medicine doctor that you could always go see when, uh, you know, issues arise. And you're going to need like a, an osteo and a physio and possibly a masseuse. Yeah. So we found an osteo. Um, so I'm, I went to go see my osteo now and we're working on some stuff. And yeah, we're going to see what happens. But that's the plan. So I had to have this uh, team of health professionals to surround yeah. me so that that way I can keep my body intact long enough. Because I think that sometimes I, I'm thinking that if I could keep myself, my, my body physically intact and strong, I'm going to have an advantage over the guys who don't approach this the same way in competition, you know, because, you know, at, at 40 something years old, guys have a lot of injuries. They might not have as much cardio. They much, they might not have enough, as much flexibility. So me, I, I don't really care how I win it in the sense that like, if I show up there and there's five guys and I'd be two of them and I'm world champion, I'll still take it. <laughs> Yeah. What, what about nutritionist? Do you have one or? Uh, nutritionist? No, no, actually, I don't have a nutritionist. Like I, you know, I have some knowledge in, in, in regards to, to uh, how to eat properly. But I mean, it's not my uh, super specialty. Like I know, obviously, I know how to eat to, to stay lean, you know? Yeah. And I, I, I know like uh, I'm pretty advanced to help your average Joe, but to help somebody like myself, then I'm going to have to probably get help at one point. And because, yeah. you know, there's, there's only so much time in a day. I can't like spend five hours a day reading up on stuff and experimenting. Sometimes it's better to just to pay somebody to, you know, to yeah. uh, tell you what and you think. This is, uh, I, that regarding nutrition, this is something that's, uh, like I've been way too much before the judo thing. And like, it, it's every like discipline is different. But um, when I think of nutrition, it's, um, I always see it from like the bodybuilding point of view. And that's not necessarily healthy because they do so much like yo-yoing and bulking and cutting. And, but if you were to give like for me and my audience and like, or your audience, my audience, everyone, um, how like the, like I would say like the big picture for judo nutrition, how in, my, in your opinion, like stay lean and also, uh, you know, around the weight that you compete and also uh, gives you energy. Like, for example, I would never, like from my experience, I would never go zero carb or keto in something as explosive as judo, for example. Like, bodybuilders can do that all they want, but in a, as like a, like a judo format, I would never go with that. Like, how, what do you have to say nutrition wise for, you know, all the people that are practicing judo? Oh, okay. Okay. So let's, um, there's a lot of like aspects to that. So we'll touch on weight, right? If, um, if you, if you have weight to lose, like the truth is like for you to know what your, um, uh, your actual weight is, get an uh, accurate picture of your, uh, how much you actually weigh now. You gotta, you gotta take your weight every single day under the same circumstances. So for example, you wake up in the morning, you take your weight or yeah. you wake up in the morning, you go to the washroom, then you take your weight. So you have to do the same thing every day. So once you take your weight from Monday to Sunday, so that's seven days, then you add it all up and you average it up. So then that's going to give you your average weight. Right. And that's a more accurate representation of how much you actually weigh now, because the thing is, um, on a day-to-day -day basis, your weight fluctuates depending on how much food and how much water you have in your body. So if yeah. you take your weight in the morning and you take your weight in the afternoon or in the evening, it's going to change. It's not going to make sense. And even from day to day, your weight is going to, is going to change. So for example, yeah. if, you're, if you're competing or you, uh, and you want to be at a certain, um, uh, you want to be in a certain weight class, normally you want to be 
ideally in the, um, in the higher uh, range of your weight class. So depending yeah. on what that is, let's say you're, <clears throat> so if you want to, and, and for your competition, I think that one thing that you have to take into consideration is, are you cutting weight or not? You know, do you, do you have to cut down or not? And how much can you possibly cut? You know, like if, so if you want to lose weight, <clears throat> you have to take a average of week one, and then you have to compare it with average of week two. And uh -huh. if your weight is not going down, right, from week one to week two, if it's not going down, then that just means you weren't in a caloric deficit. If it stays the right. same, it means you're eating at maintenance, uh, maintenance level in terms of your calories. If you're putting on weight, it means that obviously you are in a uh, uh, surplus. surplus. Right. So that's the important thing. You have to track your weight. And then from there, um, when it comes to dieting, you, you don't want to diet too hard to go down. Like, let's say you want to go down in weight. You have to, you have to be um, systematic about it. So the rule of thumb is 1%. You don't want to lose more than 1% of your body weight in pounds per, per, per week. Because if you, if you do that, it means that you're going down too fast. So you're kind of starving yourself. If you're yeah. starving yourself, then you're losing muscle mass. So you oh. don't want to lose muscle mass because, you know, muscle is, uh, it's hard to build for one. And it's, uh, it's metabolic. It's important, like for you to have all that it's, it's functional. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's good for performance, right. To have muscle, yeah. so you don't want to go down, down too fast. So if you were to create a deficit, uh, a deficit on a daily basis, you want to, you don't want to create it just through food. So you want to, for example, if you want a 500 calorie deficit a day, because a pound of fat is 3,500 calories. Yeah. So if you wanted to um, lose a pound of fat, then at the end of the week, you want to have a deficit of 3,500 calories. So if you were to create a 500 calorie deficit a day, after seven days, that would be 3,500 calories. The problem with 500 calories is that that's a lot. <laughs> That's like a yeah. whole, that's practically a whole meal. So how would yeah. you do that? Well, you would do it half, half. You would um, eat, let's say, for example, 200 calories less, which is very doable. But burn more. I could go, uh, uh, yeah. And, you know, let's say 250 calories, you, you eat 250 calories less, but then you go burn off 250 calories. All right. Through exercise. Mm. So that's uh, a much better way of doing it. You know, yeah, of much course, mm -hmm. like we're, walking we're, 200 calories is very feasible. Exactly, exactly. And the thing is, um, and the way you eat, I always preach a balanced diet, <laughs> you know, so you want to have your proteins, your carbs, and of course, uh, your, your, your fats. fats, eat a lot of veggies. It's very good for your body and all that. And of course, resting is important. I think, I think that if you go, um, the more, if you eat processed foods, like, cause it doesn't matter how often you eat in a day, you know, yeah. like, uh, yeah. I think it's better to, to everybody's different, but I, it's better to spread it out. I feel so that your energy levels are stable, you know, at least yeah. like, let's say once in the morning or afternoon. And then, you know, uh, sometime in the evening, you know, two, three meals, it really doesn't matter at the end of the day, it's how many calories you consumed in that day. 